presentation, we are going to look at the strength of concrete masonry. So what's in a masonry wall? We generally have block uh, that's going to be concrete or clay. We can have mortar that's going to be type N, S, or M. We can have grout, fine, coarse, or self-consolidated grout. We'll have vertical reinforcement for vertical bending strength of the wall. We'll have horizontal reinforcement, sometimes for the horizontal bending strength of the wall, but more often just for crack control. We'll also have control joints uh, to break up the masonry walls, but then the frequency of those control joints is going to be dependent on horizontal reinforcement that we've selected. But the first things we're going to focus on, the strength of the masonry wall, um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to reference all those different elements, components of the masonry wall, the block, the grout, and the mortar. Each of those different components has different attributes, and together they form a masonry assembly. We also want to define the masonry assembly strength, uh, which is going to be denoted as F prime M. How do we determine what F prime M is? There's really two different methods for determining the strength. We have the compressive strength method, and we also have the prism test method uh, that can be utilized to determine F prime M. The most common is going to be the compressive strength method. Really, the, that's going to be defined within the code, the TMS 402602 code from the Masonry Society. Uh, the TMS 602 is going to be the specification for masonry structures. Uh, table 2 within that part of the code is going to give us the values that we need to understand the design strength of masonry. So within this table that I have uh, replicated here, uh, on the left we can see the strength of the overall masonry assembly. On the right you can see two different columns for different types of mortar, and then within those columns are going to be the required block strengths to be used within, um, within those wall assemblies. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these numbers around. I think it's a little bit easier to look at because on the left side of the equation, what I really want to look at is, okay, what are the blocks that I have? What are the block suppliers going to be giving me? Uh, when I define and understand what those blocks are going to be, then I can specify the type of mortar, type S mortar, uh, for structural is typically what I would use. And then based on those two values, that's when I'll come up with my uh, final um, design strength of masonry assembly, my F prime M. So again, with the 2,000 PSI blocks, uh, type S mortar, we're going to have an F prime M of 2,000. For blocks that are going to be 3250 PSI or more, we're going to have type S mortar and a design strength of 2,500 PSI. And then finally, if we have blocks as strong as 4,500 PSI within that same type S mortar, we're going to have a design strength uh, F prime M of 3,000. Across the country, across the United States, we often have blocks that are going to be stronger than 3,250 PSI. Uh, so I can very confidently say when we use those blocks, uh, in type S mortar, um, which I can specify, I typically am going to do my masonry designs for an F prime M of 2,500 uh, or greater. And we did a little research here at Force. We assembled a lot of different block uh, breakouts and, and block strength values, and we tabulated them here in a map. Uh, so you can locate different parts of the country and you can look and see uh, what different types of blocks you typically have available. Now you can always specify a higher strength block, uh, but this is going to be the block that's going to be made every day uh, within block companies uh, all across the country. The other method, uh, PRISM test method, um, is going to be looking at testing uh, determine the overall strength of our designs. Um, we're going to look at the average of at least three different PRISMs, um, but then that average for the testing of the assembly uh, can't be more than the actual strength of the units themselves. Uh, when we have partially grouted or solid grouted walls, we can now use grouted prisms. Um, so we're going to have a prism again of a block, mortar, and then grout. Um, and we're going to test that, that sample to determine what the overall strength is. The strength then of the prism test is going to be the F prime M, the strength of the masonry assembly that we're going to use in our design. So again, really quickly, if I have uh, three different samples, I'm going to test each one of those. I'm going to determine an overall strength. Uh, for those different tests. And once I have all of that information, I can sum them up, uh, divide by three to get the average, and I have an F prime M of just over 4,000 PSI. And again, the strength of the prism test is going to be 
the strength F prime M of the masonry assembly. Why is F prime M so important? Again, more efficient um, designs are going to be achieved with actual F prime M. So we don't want to use some arbitrarily low uh, values. We want to actually find out what the blocks that are going to be used for our designs. We have wall designs are going to be a lot better, both load bearing and non-load bearing walls, shear walls are all going to be better with the actual F prime M. We got masonry lintels that are going to be shallower and less reinforcement. We have columns and pilasters, which are going to be better. Really reinforcement, all of our designs are going to be more efficient. Lap links are going to be shorter. And then connections, we have masonry walls and, and columns that are going to be used within buildings that have a lot of different materials connecting to those masonry elements. And so all of those different connections are going to be a lot more efficient uh, if we use the actual F prime M. If we want to get into some of the higher strengths, um, or if you just want to see what the actual uh, strength is going to be for whatever the materials we have, we can always go to the PRISM test method. Uh, anytime we want to achieve something greater than 3000 PSI, uh, we're going to have to use a PRISM test method. But really, anytime uh, we want to quantify a greater strength uh, of masonry, we can use that PRISM test method. Uh, here's just going to be an example of if we want to get into uh, something stronger than 3000 PSI, using the PRISM test method is really the only option that we have. Uh, and then we can determine different uh, blocks, strengths that are going to be required, mortar type, maybe it's going to be type M, and then a higher grout strength that's going to be uh, needed for the higher uh, strength for our masonry design. So again, on the project note specifications, we're going to define the block grout and mortar. We're not going to just put the assembly strength, we're going to actually define the properties of each of the different components of our masonry design. And then just as a quick example, uh, one of the things that you could put for notes on your masonry designs is the assembly strength of F prime M of 2,500. Again, I think that could be the average across the country. To do that, we need a block strength at least 3,250 or higher. Once we have all of that defined, we know our grout strength is also gonna be 2,500 or greater. Again, matching F prime M. Um, and then the mortar is going to be type S. And again, it's not necessary to define the strength of the mortar. We just need to define the type. And so that would be a, a perfect example for uh, what we could put within the masonry notes on a drawing. All the information that we have in this present short presentation is going to be available at this website. We have a short paper that you can download, uh, take a look at, and read a little bit more about uh, how do we come up with the concrete masonry design strengths um, for our designs. And so that's going to wrap up this short video. Uh, we're certainly going to have other videos uh, on the blocks, on mortar and grout properties. Uh, we're also going to have different uh, videos on reinforcement, both vertical horizontal reinforcement, uh, masonry lintel design, and many other topics within masonry um, on this channel. Thanks a lot for, for stopping by.